Our own mothers were ashamed of us. Hit us our whole lives. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 based on a true story movies that left out the craziest part. I've told him he knows now. You drink blood, Abby. You didn't tell him that. No! You'd never say that again. You're a legend, Frank. You're bloody right I am. We're all legends. I never did that. That's not me. I'm, uh, I'm actually a pretty neat guy. Um, he hit me up, packed the wallet. For this list, we'll be looking at biopics and films inspired by real life events that omitted fascinating details we would have liked to have seen on the screen. Which true story do you think left out the craziest part? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, The Bearded Lady's True Backstory, The Greatest Showman. Among this crowd-pleasing musical's many artistic liberties, P.T. Barnum actually got his big break by acquiring Joyce Heth, an elderly African-American woman, and turning her autopsy into an attraction. The bearded lady, Letty Lutz, also had her history tweaked. Please leave me alone. They don't understand, but they will. Her real name was Annie Jones, and she didn't join Barnum's Circus as an adult. Jones was merely nine months old, earning her parents $150 a week. Between then and her death at age 37, Jones grew facial hair as a five-year-old, got married twice, and was supposedly kidnapped by a phrenologist posing as her father, resulting in a court case. Whether that last part is true or a publicity stunt, Jones's story had the potential to be the greatest show on earth. Number 9. Crucible Cakes – The Crucible Now listen to me, Betty dear. I've talked to your papa, and I've told him everything. So there's nothing to be feared anymore. This adaptation of Arthur Miller's play captures the paranoia and injustice of the Salem witch trials, but overlooks an especially weird element. There were many nonsensical ways of testing accused witches, including throwing them in the water to see if they floated or sank. In the case of Abigail Williams and Betty Paris, their urine was baked into a rye flour cake. A dog then ate the disgusting dessert, which somehow was supposed to lead the witch hunters to the root of evil. We've heard of urinal cakes, but this is ridiculous. Not I. It wasn't me, I swear it. These two children may be dying, who? Did you buy? I knew it! When the dog didn't get sick, Williams and Paris accused an enslaved woman named Tibita and two others of witchcraft. Ironically, Tibita made the cake, and she eventually confessed despite the lack of proof. The poor woman. He has you by the throat this very moment, doesn't he? Number 8. Isidore and Ida Strauss, Titanic. Jack and Rose are fictional characters, but at least one tragic romance actually occurred on the RMS Titanic. We all remember the haunting image of an elderly man and woman embracing in bed, accepting fate as the water floods into their room. These two are based on Isidore and Ida Strauss, a real-life couple who went down with the ship. Although the Strausses could have gotten on a lifeboat with their maid Ellen Bird, Isidore was unwilling to go, since women and children remained in jeopardy. Isidore tried convincing his wife to get to safety, but Ida chose to stay with the man she loved. Please, be sensible. We have been living together for many years, Isidore. Where you go, I go. A deleted scene depicts Ida staying by Isidore's side, but we gladly would have watched an entire movie about this couple. We've been together for 40 years. And where you go, I go. Don't argue with me, Isidore. You know it does no good. Number 7. Sun City Performance, Bohemian Rhapsody. Good. What's going on, Brian? Well, if you'd answered your phone, you'd know already. This really isn't a good time, guys. John Reed called today. He has a little tour in mind for us. 
Whether you love or hate this Queen biopic, it would have been interesting to see one of the band's most controversial concerts recreated. In 1984, Queen took their works tour to the Sun City Super Bowl in Bofutatswana, South Africa. Their decision to play in South Africa was met with an outcry since the country continued to practice apartheid, a segregation system. The Britain's Musicians Union banned members from putting on a show in Sun City, and the United Nations advised against playing in the country altogether. Queen went through with the gig regardless, although a few shows had to be cancelled when Freddie Mercury's voice gave out. Queen argued that they did it for their fans in South Africa, claiming their crowds were integrated. Four misfits who don't belong together playing to the other misfits. The outcasts, right at the back of the room, who are pretty sure they don't belong either. Number 6. Tanya Harding, a woman of many talents. I, Tanya. Tanya Harding's rivalry with Nancy Kerrigan remains one of the most shocking scandals to ever rock the sports world. What's just as crazy, though, is Harding's life after being banned from competitive skating. Your Honor, I don't have an education. All I know is skating. That's all I know. And I, I am no one if I can't, if I can't skate. It's okay. <laughs> While the epilogue briefly touches upon her boxing career and other jobs, there's a lot more to her story. The haters always say, Tanya, tell the truth. There's no such thing as truth. I mean, it's bullshit. She made her acting debut in the 1996 indie film Breakaway, playing a restaurant manager who gets involved in a stolen money plot. You'd never make it in my line of work. You're not tough enough. You'd be surprised how tough I really am. That same year, she revived an 81-year-old woman named Alice Olsen after she stopped breathing in a bar. Harding has since broken a land speed record in her 1931 Ford Model A and become a reality TV star. We'd love to see this all explored in a sequel to Tanya. Number 5. The Life of John DuPont, Foxcatcher Do you, do you have any idea who I am? No. Foxcatcher leaves out some of the most jaw-dropping details about John DuPont, such as a horse riding accident that cost him two valuable assets. Horses are stupid. Horses eat and shit. That's all they do. DuPont nearly shot a 12-year-old boy by a pond while aiming for geese. He was briefly married to Gail Wenk, who claims DuPont tried shoving her into a fireplace at gunpoint. The mentally ill DuPont allegedly thought Wank was a Russian spy. He also thought treadmill clocks were sending him back in time and spirits were tunneling into his house. I'm a little concerned that there are some psychological issues that we need to take care of. On one hand, part of what makes Foxcatcher such a disturbing experience is that DuPont remains clouded in mystery throughout. On the other hand, DuPont's life before the Schultz brothers could have been an equally unsettling film. Number 4. John Nash's Sexuality, Arrest, and Child – A Beautiful Mind My quest has taken me through the physical, the metaphysical, the delusional, and back. This Best Picture winner ends with mathematician John Nash dedicating his Nobel Prize to his wife Alicia. Although he did win the Nobel in 1994, Nash and Alicia were divorced for more than 30 years before remarrying in 2001. Where Alicia has a prominent role in the film, it completely ignores Eleanor Steer, a nurse who had an illegitimate child with Nash when he was single. Also absent is their son, John David Steer, who Nash neglected for most of his life. Charles was watching, he was okay. There's no one here! Nash's sexuality isn't fully explored either. Although Nash denied being gay, some have recounted his infatuation with various men. His 1954 arrest for indecent exposure is omitted as well. Professor Nash? Professor Nash? Let's avoid a scene, shall we? Had these chapters been included, we feel Nash's portrayal would have been even more layered. Number 3. Tough Luck, Togo. Balto. 
Being a family-friendly animated film, we know how to take the true story label with a grain of salt. Oh, that, that, that's the most amazing, the most yeah. fantastic, that is the most incredible thing. Yeah. That's the most uh, phenomenal. I, I never. That's I just... good. No. Well, maybe a truckload of salt, as Balto didn't even run the most dangerous part of the 1925 serum to the gnome. That distinction goes to another dog named Togo, who went through freezing hell to make the delivery. Since Balto led the last leg, he got the glory, the statue, and the movie. <laughs> Balto really did do all of that, didn't he, Grandma? Oh yes, sweetheart, he really did. And today they run the Iditarod dog race over the very path he and the others took. To be fair, Togo has received more credit in recent years. He even got his first statue in 1997 and a live-action film in 2019. While that movie delves deeper into Togo's journey, it overlooks the aftermath where he chased after a reindeer, disappeared, and was eventually returned to his owner, Leonard Seppala. Number 2. Getting to know the real Anna the king and I. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. As seen in this classic musical and its source material, Anna Leah Nowens accepted a job teaching the king of Siam's wives and children. Anna's life leading up to this point isn't what pop culture has led you to believe, however. For starters, Anna was a mixed race woman born in India. While the film portrays her as upper class, Anna was left little money after her husband died. She thus moved to Singapore and started a school for British officers' children. Anna took this time to reinvent herself, claiming that she was originally from Wales. Her father was a major, and her late husband was an army officer. Oh, but this is a lie. It is a false lie. She also adopted a polished English accent, lied about her age, and neglected to mention her mother's heritage. You will say no more. No more! I will say no more! because there is no more to say. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, everything that happened next, Zola. You wanna hear a story about how me and this bitch here fell out? It's kinda long, but it's full of suspense. Like the Twitter thread it's based on, this film might have exaggerated some elements regarding Asia Zola King's crazy Tampa trip. On the whole, though, this unbelievable true story is more fact than fiction. Girl, you know I love you. The insanity didn't end with the road trip. Two women named Brianna Pello and Jessica Forgey subsequently got mixed up with Jessica Ray Swiatkowski, renamed Stephanie in the film, and her pimp. Well, he used to take care of me. Mmm, take care of me in stripper language means he is her pimp. I am not here for that. Swiatkowski reportedly contacted Zola a few days after the trip, claiming that her pimp got arrested in Vegas. Given everything that previously transpired, Zola chose to not get involved. He pled guilty to sex trafficking and coercion, receiving a 16-year sentence with the possibility of parole after five. This movie needed an epilogue. I'm gonna get you a ticket out of here. I'm gonna get you a ticket out of here too. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.